Welcome to the Bottle Cat Media Podcast, episode number five, I think. Let me open my, Hello. Open my beer. What's it, it's, it's, just a, it's just us two today. Kevin's um, pre- pre- getting ready for his Japan trip. Yeah, Kevin's, Kevin's getting ready to be a fully functioning adult. Oh my god. <laughs> we saved it. It's okay. <laughs> that exact same thing happened to me. At, at New Year's, but except it was like almost the half of the bottle. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> ah! Oh, what the fuck? All right, that's fine. What? 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 Are you done? I don't get it. Is it out of are, memory or? You, no, I don't think so. Battery thing? What's going on? No, they're just charged. I'll set up the webcam if I have to. Okay. Okay. Um... Just keep an eye on it. Yeah. Just stare at the camera creepily. <laughs> okay. Uh, apologies for technical Yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah. why the, the camera's acting up today. Uh, if, if it happens again, we'll just uh, take a little break. And, and then, then set, set up. Reset the up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Cool. Um, did you want to? Oh, yeah. Let's, cheers. <laughs> you, cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers, friend. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just us two. Ke- uh, Kevin is getting ready for Japan. And uh, Eddie, Eddie is a family man. Exactly, something yeah. came up with not not something serious, but it's like an occasion. I think they're celebrating yeah, something. Yeah. I mean, it's a uh, it's very appropriate for you know a uh, channel called Bottle Cap Media. I mean, we got our beers mm-hmm. and we got no girlfriends, so we're here. We're yep, all good. Exactly, yeah. we're the single members forever of, uh, of Bottle Cap Media. To wink, you know. To, for, there you go. <laughs> forever, <laughs> forever scone. <laughs> forever sculptman. So I think we're since it's just me and Jobby. Um, we'll see if it's a short or long one. See what, yeah, we'll see. see what happens. Yeah. But we, Jobby tweeted out, and I did from the BCM account, asking if you had any questions, and yeah. you guys did. Well, you guys answered, asked some questions, so we we're gonna be going over that in a little bit after we go into some topics that I think I wanted to bring up with you. So the fan question corner will be coming soon. So uh, exactly. keep your you know, pants yeah, on. We, we we will we will be um answering some of these questions. Um, and what was I gonna say? In regards to answering questions as well. Oh, that's it's actually it will be a good idea if you ever have questions for future podcast and future podcasts that you want us to answer. Um, tweet at us as well. Um, at Bottle Cap Media, I want to say yeah. At Bottle Cap Vids, sorry, so Twitter. Or if you want to tweet it to Jobby or my own my personal accounts, that Great Migs and your Jobby the Hung on Twitter, right? That's right. Sure. And anytime we're open twenty four seven. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We will get to them except on eventually. Sundays because we're here. Yeah, exactly. We, re- we record these on Sundays. The illusion's broken, Jobby. No, yeah, we're, we record these on Mondays because they come out on Mondays. What do you mean illusion, man? We're trying to be as transparent as possible. Oh, you're right. I just admitted that we're both single. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. At least at least we have each other. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so I wanted to bring up somebody, a, a very big YouTuber. Uh, I don't want to name his name for obvious reasons. But because you all know it. Yeah, you guys will know. <laughs> There's a whole fiasco. The first week of the new year, right? Because this is starting it off right. Starting it off on a good note, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to. I don't, I don't even want to go into specifics, but he showed something that shouldn't have been showed. He got flack for it. I, I, I personally was like, "What's going on? Mm. Like, why? What? Who in the right mind?" But I, I want to talk more so the implications of it. Uh, mainly like, are we gonna see it like an Adpocalypse three point mm. and um. It, it just kind of made me concerned for a lot of the creators that I like, if if they're gonna be able to just like if if this things these things keep happening, if um, being on YouTube is gonna be sustainable, um, just because you're you're very at, you're at kind of like the mercy of YouTube, yeah, and their policies, right? So right. If, if they don't kind of clean up their I've act, I've got to I've got to take a squig for this, Excuse yeah, because well I. I mean, coming from a YouTuber that does this for a living, I yeah. want, I'd really like to get your opinion on it. Well, uh, definitely share your concerns, mm-hmm. of course. But uh, what's uh, what's really scummy about all of it is the, I guess, the implied favoritism. <laughs> because like how YouTube handled the situation where it's like uh, they didn't they didn't get rid of the video for like a long time. And what, when it finally went down, I don't think it was YouTube. I think like. He himself took it. Yeah, out. I think so. Yeah, but then you know there was the fact that when people were uploading it, they were getting striked, mm. or even when people were even talking about it, they were getting like demonetized, and right? Striked. It's yeah, like, what's going on here? You know? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's just that I feel that YouTube, as a company, they're really confused as to what they want to be. Mm. You know, like uh, before before like all of this like 
even before like monetization, YouTube was clearly just a platform for free speech mm -hmm. within reason. Mm -hmm. And you know these ba they had these basic guidelines where it's like no nudity, no violence, yeah. and you know this video like broke uh, one of those mm -hmm. or like you know uh, disturbing imagery like right. stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But then now they're just trying. They're exerting more control over their platform. We, you know, yeah. in in terms of like what gets out or like what's uh, well, for the sake for the sake of advertisers mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So uh, it's um. I don't know what they want to be. You know, yeah. do they want to be something kid friendly and yet like uh, someone like that is like one of their biggest creators? It's right. Like, what's going on here? Yeah, because yeah. it 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 is it's frustrating to see some leniency toward him because he is such a big YouTuber. Yeah, he has such a big audience. Which I mean, well, you just uh, we just gendered him, so it's not yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. We know, I know he's a he. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> sorry <laughs> no 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 it's okay um, i think it, i did it too yeah it just it, he has such a big audience and he has such a big influence yeah on uh i it, I, I think the big thing is his audience he, he pulls so many numbers in that he himself makes money and he makes money for youtube and he he's also a part of um some youtube red series a movie sorry not even a series right oh right yeah um so that me that might be part of it but you you gotta um Especially, especially when it comes to your own policies, you have to, you can't be biased. Yeah. Um. You have to make yeah, sure stick, he gets. Yes. You yeah. have to. You have to have like a set of principles or rules, mm -hmm. and you stick to those rules no matter what. They yeah. should apply equally to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like if, and here like here's the really like a, uh, shitty part about YouTube's uh behavior in these recent times. They're very like not transparent about it. You mm -hmm. know, it's like what's wrong. Tell me what's yeah. wrong. Please talk to me, please. Yeah. It's like they don't want to tell tell us what's wrong. Right. I, yeah. They just kind of like do this stuff left and right. And all we're left with is like guesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's disappointing because yeah. I, I like I love the platform so much. Mm -hmm. um, me too. Mainly mainly because of the creators. Cause, because it, it gave creators a tool yeah. um, to create and show their, their work on the internet. But as a, I guess as a platform... As a company, I guess more so. Yeah, they're um they have some very significant shortfallings, and that's uh I agree with you on that. Where it's like I think YouTube was at its height, and YouTube was at like its peak and like its most uh, beloved phase of their like lifespan, where they were just a tool. Mm -hmm. Now they want to be a presence. They want to be an entity. You know what I mean? Right. They want to be like a voice that exerts control over the creators. When before. The creators were the voice. Mm -hmm. Now it's like it, it feels like cre the creators and YouTube are now two separate like uh, things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like mm -hmm. um, and uh, I I remember like the old tagline. People make jokes about this, where it's like the old tagline of YouTube was like uh, "broadcast yourself." Yeah, it's not that anymore. <laughs> it's not yeah. no. Because I, I I and I think that's because there's been a big shift <laughs> in um, streaming. Uh, you mm. see companies like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, even now, where they're creating. Your, their own content so youtube want, wants in on that especially because they're, they're one of like the pioneers yeah of that's right online video content yeah like when it comes down to it they're a business yeah yeah which is it's uh it's an unfortunate truth but that's what it is mm -hmm. but i don't know if this is true anymore though but i remember uh reading something about where like youtube is one of the one of uh google's like a uh, most non-profitable enterprise really i think that like, might, i believe that yeah i think they're like losing money on it so yeah. like at this point i feel like they're just experimenting mm. and everyone on youtube is just a guinea pig for right their, for google's experiments oh man uh, cause, <laughs> it makes me nervous because if, if if that is true of that the youtube is their least profitable um property yeah that, like if if they can't sustain um, the company, YouTube as a company, what the the people who suffer the most are the creators that rely on YouTube. Yeah, for yeah. Brain like time. a lot of jobs will be lost if this goes down. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, when you like look at it in the context of history, that's always happened. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like businesses fail, but industries, entire industries have yeah. have gone and left. People lose their jobs. Yeah, yeah. I it, it just it made me really concerned um, of the future of YouTube um, because yeah I. And as I guess as a platform, because I feel like cur creators should have like their own standalone um, 
place to have their content so they can be seen but it's just it's just hard youtube is just so convenient it's just there it's that's definitely part of its success yeah like how convenient it is to like really get yourself out mm-hmm. there yeah. yeah i mean it's it's way more convenient than the like setting up your own website and all that. yeah because that's the yeah. alternative and that's i mean those are also extra costs for creators yeah so yeah. like if early on if mm-hmm. if you if you want to start out and yeah. it, there's just very little yeah. barrier to entry for youtube yeah so so in a way like all of this stuff that YouTube is going through and like all the hardships, it's still sort of justified on the part of the creator mm-hmm. because it's so like we we forget how good we have it. Mm. There's still a platform that exists that anybody can like get big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Any absolutely anybody. Anybody. Like yeah. regardless of production costs. Especially after like the the new partner policy changes where it's like you don't have to hit like a milestone to get monetized. Mm-hmm. Just get monetized out, out of the Oh can, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that could be wrong about that <laughs> the, the yeah. last time i checked, <laughs> the last I, time I I'm, checked. I'm pretty sure like the partner requirements are a little bit more laxed for sure yeah i feel like when you get partnered in, on youtube it, back in the day it was like a huge deal oh like, oh definitely to make money off of yeah your videos i, feel like. I think i've heard some stories about that like uh is it okay if we mention other yeah, youtubers well, like, philip defranco i think he mentioned uh-huh. something like that where it's like uh, him getting partnered was a very like a big deal for him right yeah i think we're gonna see people rely on do you have to no, sync? No, it's fine. Okay. Let's do it on our voice. Um, it's probably a bit good idea to do that in the future, though. Like out there. That's yeah, fine. Okay. Um, I think pe- we're going to see a big shift f- from people using YouTube as... Like relying on YouTube solely. I think they're going to start relying on their audience <laughs> more. Relying, it feels like it's a bad word. But a pa- a, a, just Patreon's a good tool for Leeching creators. off. Exactly. Um <laughs> I th- I think more and more creators are going to see that as more of a valuable resource. Patreon, I mean, yeah. which and and that and saying a re- like Patreon being a resource, I mean they're fans. Yeah. Like if their fans are willing out are willing to um, fund the channel, the content that they enjoy, I think that's the way it's going to go. If YouTube keeps going along this path and if they keep losing advertisers, yeah. Um, but, but Patreon could only go so far because um like most of your subscriber base mm. they don't go on patreon like patreon is really? like a minority of like okay. a subscriber usually right in most cases mm-hmm. but uh some creators that can live off of patreon they have such huge followings that the minority of their following is enough to live off of mm-hmm. if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah so that's a, that's a good point yeah it could, it could only go so like far yeah. yeah at least the big creators will survive mm-hmm. so that's all i'm gonna say yeah um yeah. now more than ever i think there's a it's a there's a it's a good time for a competitor to get into it but i think people who are thinking about creating a new, a new platform like youtube are looking at it and seeing like it's not worth the trouble yeah it's, so, it's definitely gonna deter a lot of newcomers like yeah. if they're in it because like there's all of this stuff it's not it's not mainstream news mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. like most people don't know about all the, the yeah. trouble that youtube's going through well now more so like well the whole the whole situation where that lead, led us into this conversation oh i feel like some more outlets are getting into it i mm. I, I was happy to see because when i heard about what happened what had happened I, I i was happy to see that not many news sources had covered it right away because i don't think all the facts were out there mm. it was we were, it, it was just you can really just go go based off of the the video yeah and i if i'm i was glad to see some some like restraint from news outlets i mean that's always appreciated yeah <laughs> they didn't... especially after the goddamn hit pieces and you know the other guy exactly <laughs> yeah exactly um so it, it, it was that was nice to see yeah because i because i had seen it on twitter first so people, people were like some grumblings about it and i was like yeah me what, too. Ha- what happened so I, I immediately always go to google google the person's name and then youth video no, but nothing came up yeah i saw like a, a satirical drawing by someone named shadman no, okay don't, don't look him up <laughs> um, yeah but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's how i heard so about it. i guess if there's a silver lining in this whole shit storm and <clears throat> i know we're at we're by proxy we're adding fuel to the fire yeah but but yeah well we're doing our best to to keep it uh that that was anonymous <laughs> yeah that, that was that's like that's my intent to keep it because yeah. i'm not going to use it in the name I'm we, not we don't want to we don't want to coast on this news exactly yeah we just want to talk because honestly there were i mean pe- people made videos videos about it yeah uh, i i think earnestly i feel like they had something they wanted to say and they used their platform to say it 
Um, obviously, they were gonna. I don't know if they were. I I don't. I would like to think that they weren't expecting like, oh, I'm gonna get a bunch of views with like from this. I mean, like as as hard as it sounds, as hard as it is to think about, that's definitely like an aspect of mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's like breaking news came out. Yeah. We like let's find some way to take advantage. Exactly. Of it. Yeah. yeah. So does not mean that that that's why I was really adamant on not saying his name? Yeah, because pe- people already know. Yeah, um, not so. including him in the thumbnail. Yeah, not even not, title, not, not, not even going to put it in the tags. It's just yeah. It, I think I just the main thing I wanted to talk about was the implications of it. Yeah, because I think that's important. Definitely, definitely, especially for people like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it. I I mean I don't want to talk too much about what i want for the channel i mean like plans i really don't really don't expect anything to come of it it's just it is just to have fun to do to create i guess yeah yeah and it's nice to have you guys in a room for x amount of hours just to even hang out so i'm like forcing (laughs) you guys to hang out and Uh you know what i I appreciate it too yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. Um, because we're single and 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 alone (laughs) and alone that's right (laughs) The nat the natural state of human beings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, I mean, it's we'll see what happens. I'm. I always like to be optimistic, but on this time, I'm like, for some reason, this felt like the beginning of the end. <laughs> Ooh. But Ooh. who knows? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Like, like honestly, we we don't know what's gonna happen mm-hmm. after this because like there's. I mean, we could always make predictions. Mm-hmm. Like logically, the prediction would be a downhill slope. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm, uh, I, I, it's, um, what were you going to say? Oh, well, no, I just wanted to ask you if you want to go into the questions, but you, okay, oh, I, I was going to say like, uh, the only way that I could keep saying and keep my, and keep doing my job is to hold out hope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, rebellions are built on hope. Right. It, well, this, <laughs> Cause I, I wanted to make a point that I just remembered uh, Yeah. because this is a new medium. Um, and we're, we are seeing a shift from like, I guess, TV being traditional over to like. Co- um, online content uh, shift i mean like this new generation they're, they're yeah not, they're yeah. watching less tv watching more online content mm-hmm. so that make that gives me hope because t- how big tv and movies are now youtube can maybe even go that way i don't know what would come next after youtube now here's kind of a, a weird uh possibility that i've thought of maybe you can make him make it to black mirror episode i don't know <laughs> yeah. but like what if a big corporation say like disney mm. created a YouTube competitor. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, that would work only for those like kid friend, like family friendly channels, right? Right. Because definitely, like a company like Disney or even any large company would be very concerned with their image. That's what YouTube is trying to be, and and it's a very shaky road for them to get to that point. You kind of just blew my mind. Yeah. A little bit. Well, because like, so, okay, say Disney is a good example of someone who would make, who can make, who has the capital to to do that, to do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it, and it would make sense because they they're already taking YouTubers from <clears throat> from YouTube and putting and plugging them into. Oh, that's right. They yeah. had this whole like gaming block. So, like, I mean, the the next logical if they really if they really want to gain gain an audience, they tell these YouTubers like, look, this this um. Titanic is sinking. Jump over, jump over over here. You have guaranteed ad revenue, and your audience audience can come over, and they'll have like they don't have to worry about um, uh, I guess like terrorist videos or the whole what the whole what was that Elsa Gate? They don't have yeah, to worry about all that. Crap. Right, right. Um, we like we'll, we'll give you the resources, the same resources that you have with YouTube. Come over here. We'll give you X amount of, of money, and plus whatever ad revenue you can get from them. Because at because that was the whole point of um, networks. On YouTube, yeah, they were like, "All right, let's get this. Let's get this clump of YouTubers, so we have like a brand to sell out to advertisers." Um, so I mean, what, I, what, what's stopping YouTube, um, Disney from doing that, or any yeah, any, or any other, other large company, company. Like yeah, that, yeah, large media company? Um, because uh, which which is a scary thought because that's would kind of end the, like the era of YouTube. Yeah, because they're pretty much just making yeah, that's um channels, but like online. mm Hmm. That is that is a very scary thought, and it says a lot about the the state of like. I didn't want to bring the phrase up, but it's, it's a loaded phrase, but it's relevant here. Mm-hmm. It it really makes me question the future of free speech. Yeah, yeah, because right. like YouTube has always been like a bastion of mm-hmm. free speech, and that's you know that's what I uh, talked about when I was like, uh, broadcast yourself. Right. Like they 
they let you say anything you want, anything at all, within guidelines. Mm-hmm. But now it's like they're trying to police that. Right. Kind of like we want we want to have this certain image, mm-hmm. so you can't say this, you can't say that, you yeah. can't be a conservative, By, yeah, something like, like financially that. hamstricking creators. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows, man? I mean, it's it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. We'll the big the big corporation making a YouTube competitor. Oh but. God. <laughs> I didn't I didn't mean to like uh make this uh a despair mm. podcast. Yeah. But. No, but like I mean that's it's a good point. I yeah yeah. I mean, and it make, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because yeah. there are, I mean, there are channels for everything on YouTube. Yeah. So I mean, they they can find almost space, everything. Yeah. Yeah. On like a with the network. Oh, that's a gross. That's a gross like thought. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I need to drink more. That's after this. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go into some questions. All right, lighten up the mood a little bit. Fa- the yeah. fan question corner yeah, time. What? Gonna, what kind of shit posts do we have today? There, there aren't any like really big things that I want to talk about. Okay. Um, that I can think of right off the top of my head. So I'm we're sure just getting into questions then. Yeah, yeah. I think some trailers came out, but eh, yeah. Who watches movies anymore? <laughs> exactly. I mean, we, we could even talk about that—the theater uh, experience. But yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, let me go. See, a lot of these are so, okay. <laughs> so some, Samuel Adams on Twitter. All right. Asked. Good Sam, beer. A- Sam Adams 12 pack. Good beer. At Sam Adams 12 pack. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's what software do you use for video editing and drawing? So I don't draw, mm-hmm. right? We both use Premiere for video editing. Yeah, we actually share it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, I use uh, Photoshop to draw, mm-hmm. which you find weird because I, there's yeah, Illustrator. There, there's, <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's yeah. a lot of tools. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah. So uh, you want to elaborate on that or? That's basically it. <laughs> um, no. Well, like the only other like video software I tried when I first really wanted to get into like video editing, I tried using Microsoft. Uh, what was it? What's it called? That, the Microsoft video editing software. Movie Maker. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Windows. No, that, that's that's um, that's Mac. Uh, I think it is Movie Maker. Oh. oh is that at the is that the Apple one? No, the Apple one. No, App, Apple is App, I, iMovie. iMovie. Movie Maker is the Microsoft one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I tried using that, and it's fine. Yeah. I that's what I started off with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think I. Um, I don't think I actually edited anything with it. And then after Movie Maker, <laughs> I think I might have just gone straight to Premiere. Nice. Because Premiere, um, well, Adobe has this, has this really cool thing where you can just sign up for a subscription, which a lot of people didn't like at the beginning. They wanted to just outright buy the software, but pirate pirating. We can, I mean, you can still do it anyway, but yeah, yeah. Premiere, though, that in short, um, I like the way it, it just, it's very intuitive. It's really easy to pick up. Um, it, you can make it, but you can make it uh, more complicated that you, than you want, but you can also just make it really simple. Yeah. Like, and if you really wanted to edit on Premiere, you, the only thing you really need to use is the razor tool and the move tool. That's basically Like, just do it for simple, yeah. for simple editing. Yeah, but for me, like, coming off a, uh, a final cut mm. it was kind of a, a large learning curve yeah, to get it? back into adobe mm. but it's funny because like uh after after getting used to adobe i was searching through like the features mm-hmm. and they had an option to have to switch the keyboard layout to final cut really so it's like i could have like learned it right away but yeah. it's like eh, i learned the premiere yeah way. And it's like it, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's treated me well yeah i like i really like premiere um i also really like final cut though really i um in some ways i miss it a little bit mm. but like what I don't miss was how slow it was on my machine. Yeah, this, so. that's the cool thing about this is that Adobe has their own dedicated like media encoder, mm. so you don't have to encode right off the editing software. Right. right. Uh, okay, so. But okay. I gotta say the the after the update the doing text is ass. Yeah, the yeah. the title things is because you, you yeah, can still, I still haven't gotten used to it. I still use the legacy. You can still do editor. like yeah, that, it's yeah. just easier to format. Yeah. Um. So what? So oh, okay. rainbow rainbow. So, uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> he frequents my uh, my Twitch. Oh, okay. So I I know oh, I know nice. the guy. Yeah. Not I don't want to say no, but he I recognize right, the name. Right. So H W Rainbow on Twitter asks, what what animes are you guys looking forward to? Are you are you familiar at all with the what's coming out this season? One Punch Man. <laughs> Is it real? this season? Well, that's what I heard. You know, like we we have a friend that's really. Oh fuck. Oh mierda. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, we re- we we have a friend that's really into anime, and he's mm. like a he's he speculates that it's coming out in the during the spring. And, oh, okay. So not so, so not this season, not the winter. Not season. this season, but like this year. Right. I'm a uh, One Punch Man is de- like definitely one that I really have been waiting for forever. Mm. But other than that, um, 
I guess if they release like a Gundam Thunderbolt compilation, I'd be right. looking forward to that because okay. we haven't been keeping up. Yeah. But um um oh um Godzilla. <laughs> oh yeah, br- yeah. You were gonna bring up the yeah. Yeah yeah. So I think either it's this month or next month. I'm not sure. But um Netflix is actually doing a original movie, anime movie of Godzilla called Godzilla Monster Planet, and the idea of a Godzilla anime sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's really kind of bothering me about it is that it's a CGI anime, mm. and I'm not oh, I'm not that okay. big on, I'm not that big on that. But yeah. like the the fact that it's Godzilla, it's like this is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, and it's also ri- uh, written uh, written yeah written by the guy who did uh, Psycho Pass and Monica. oh cool so, okay yeah so I'm, for that reason alone I'm excited right. Right, to see what he comes up with. I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna die. <laughs> God, <laughs> <laughs> um, as far. As what anime I'm looking forward to. The only two that I'm really... I think I might check out... I, I'll probably check out more, but the ones that right now that I'm anticipating for this upcoming season is um, Violet Evergarden. It's, it has a really cool art style. Um, I saw, like, Crunchyroll always does this thing before the season starts. It's like, they, like, throw a compilation of different trailers to, like, like hype you up about the upcoming anime. And that that was in there, and I caught, it caught my eye, so I started started looking into it. So I'm looking forward to that. I saw a lot of buzz about that at Anime Expo, mm. and that reminds me at Anime Expo, uh, me and you know me and the anime friend, mm-hmm. we we went to the trigger panel, mm. and they announced a lot of things for this this year. Oh, cool! Okay. So like all of all of the stuff they announced at the trigger panel, I'm looking forward to because mm. I love Studio Trigger. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Darling in the Franks. Darling in the Frank spell with three X's for some reason. Nice. It's Edg- like a, edgy. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a mecha anime. It's oh, okay. a, in collaboration with A1 Studio. Mm. Um, A1 Studio does like... Um, I forget what they do. They do some big stuff though, okay. that, that I never watch. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. but big stuff that uh, that you probably recognize. Mm. Um, also, there's uh, one called Gridman, which is kind of like... A, Gridman was an old tokusatsu show from like the 70s or something. It was kind of like the same genre as like Ultraman. Mm. But they're doing an anime version of that, which okay. is kind of cool. Um, and they're doing one called, I forget what it's called, but it's the same team behind Gurren Lagann and Kill a Kill. Mm. So it's going to be in like that similar art style. And en- yeah, mm. energetic style. Like the writing is the writer is going to return. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's funny because when they did that trailer at the panel, I thought it was going to be like a second season of Kill a Kill. I got so mm. excited, but like, okay. oh, it's an original show. Yeah. Okay. That's good. It's still cool, right? <laughs> it's still cool. Definitely. So yeah, that... And um, there's a new, if anybody's from, I'm sure people are familiar with the Fate series of anime. Mm. Uh, there's a new, I guess, series coming out in that same family of anime. I think that the writer who did Psycho Pass and Madoka did a Fate series. Really? Yeah. Gen, Gen, uh, Gen Urobuchi. He's, uh, they call him the Uro Butcher. Nice. Because he kills his characters. He, a lot of people die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even, even, in, in, even in the Fate series. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, because I, I watched Fate um, Stay Night. And I really liked it. I know it's based off of like a erotic visual novel. <laughs> yeah, Gen Urobuchi has some of that. Yeah, he, well, he did work well, on another like the, one. The, the anime itself isn't really doesn't really have that. It's it's just like they good, remove the porn, keep the plot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just really cool, really cool action. A lot of waifus. That's cool. Um, so looking forward to that. Always always down for waifus, man. Yeah. If you haven't checked it out, check out Fate Stay Night. It's really good. I should check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's relatively short. It's like twenty, I think it's twenty four episodes, maybe less. Mm. So it's good. Um, mm. uh, I'm 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 skipping over like the the meme ones. Oh, okay. Because they're they're funny when like we're reading them out before, yeah, but. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you guys wanted to see it, like just check out the post that we did on Twitter. You'll see yeah, all the memes. Exactly. There, there's your guys' shout out. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so we already you went over the Godzilla Monster Planet. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. let me see oh, oh yeah and I don't know if it's coming out this year but uh, they recently announced the Ultraman anime uh, like at, like I don't know if I showed you like the redesign they did for Ultraman mm-hmm. where it's like it kind of looks like Iron Man interesting yeah but like the that was a manga before it was like a sequel to the original mm-hmm. Ultraman from like the 60s or something my Does, dad grew yeah. up with it but uh, they're doing an anime version of that manga so it's kind of cool hmm. yeah. okay yeah. They're just like updating it a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if it's this year though. It might be next year. Ultra. I think I know because the ultra, like the old Ultraman, looks like. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say he looks like the old uh, Iron Man, but not really. No, he looks like an alien. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so best worst drunken tales. Drunken tales. Yeah. Hmm. 
we do have a few of those. Yes. I mean, I think we share one. It wasn't the worst, though. It was just the, uh, a night that we got really drunk together and sang on a friend's couch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a good little that was a good little memory. We do we did get drunk. We were just singing. Yeah, it was oh. it wasn't bad, but we were really drunk. That started though with me thinking. <laughs> yeah, I know it's coming. <laughs> uh, so I read online, and I wanted to put it to the test that if you drink just straight blue agave tequila, you won't get a hangover. So I was like, let me drink as much as I can. So I did. I I I, I just I drank straight tequila that night, and. I got drunk, spoiler, big surprise, and spoiler, I still had a hangover. The worst, well, possibly one of the worst hangovers I've ever had. So the complete opposite of what you read about. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they, that, was, that was probably a trope post. Well, probably. Well, yeah. I, I just heard it everywhere. So if kids, don't try to, if, if, you can drink, if you want to drink, if you're of legal age to drink, whatever country you're in, um, don't do that. Drink, <laughs> drink moderately. Yes, Always drink moderately. Yeah. Well, I actually have a, a bad drunken story. I think I meant, I've told you multiple times where it's mm-hmm. like uh, we went to a friend's house for like to, to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. And the movie oh. we had to watch was Shin Godzilla. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, beforehand, we went to a Walmart and we got really cheap wine, like $4 bottles. Yeah. And like I drank a whole bottle of $4 wine. Nice. It was terrible. I mean, it, it made the movie like infinitely better. I, I really liked that movie, but it made it way enjoy- more enjoyable. Right. I like. I got the political subtext even more nice. after that. But <laughs> I just I just remembered the fact that we watched Shin Godzilla that night because the next day I felt like Shin Godzilla, just like <laughs> vomiting into the toilet. Like my mouth opened really wide and like oh, it was terrible. It was like the whole day, man. Vomiting purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I like yeah. the one, the only worst, because I'm generally like a good drunk. Yeah. Um, but the worst experience I've had is like New Year's, not this past last year, but last oh, year. Oh, I wasn't there for that. But yeah, I yeah. I just drank too much, and I ha- I have I have the photos of you uh, just passed out yeah. on the couch. Never again. Like... Never again. Drinking can be dangerous. Be careful out there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So and uh, I, along with that, sorry, this was. <laughs> God damn it. What's the, up? the guy's the guy's Twitter name is Giant Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> his his hand his ha- his handle his Twitter I guess at is Jack Off Idiot. So <laughs> nice. There there was no getting around there that. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you at Jack Off Idiot. Yeah. Don't be a Jack Off Idiot exactly. and drink too much. Um, and he said devil, devil he, along with the drunken tales. He also wanted to know our Devilman thoughts and have I watched it. I did watch it. We both watched it. Um, we're going to do a review on it. Yes. The same. Like, we're going to record it today. It should. It will be out. So this is going to come out tomorrow, this podcast, and then the Devilman yeah. review will be out. Saturday. We uh, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. We, on, someone asked, well, you, well, you were talking about Devilman. We already answered that. Uh, let me see. Okay. This is... A, one that I wanted to address again. Mm. So, are you thinking of doing more content on Bottle Cap Media or only podcasts? So, yes, I want to do more reviews. Um, so I want to play around with the play around with on with the content on the channel. I, w- I wanted to get you guys' opinion on that later. Um, you guys, I mean you, Eddie and Ke- oh. Kevin, but t- definitely movie reviews. Uh, if, if more than one person has watched it, you can sit down and talk about it. And uh, I talked about, I think it was last podcast, I think it was. The one I wasn't there for. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, I also <laughs> want to do more, more like outside of the office stuff, like more kind of like vloggy content. Oh, like uh, Jobby the Vlog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I want to go to like Little Tokyo, more specifically food tours though. Like I wanted like the oh, food man. of LA. That sounds, that sounds amazingly fun to yeah. make. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I want to like go to Little Tokyo, have yeah. like sushi there, ramen. Go to oh. Koreatown, Korean barbecue. Oh. <laughs> so I, I think because we, we all really like eating. <laughs> so, <laughs> and drinking. Yeah. So I, I yeah. think that'll be that'll be fun to film and to edit. So I want stuff like that. So I think you should expect that. Yeah. Um, may, maybe gameplays. We'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, does anyone share your love of Beast Wars? Kevin does. Doesn't Kevin he? does. Yeah. Kevin does. Like uh, one of the few people that I know that likes Beast Wars. So right. We might... I kind of want to do like a like a dual thing where we're just talking about Transformers because he's he's pretty big into that. Yeah, he, he yeah yeah. I, I think specifically Beast Force, he's like really into. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 
Oh, this is a, this is a, this is a good question. Sure. Well, sorry, I shouldn't have read that. He, he was just replying to. Oh, okay. He was just replying to the, yeah. to the post. The so, question for questions. Jobby, how did you and the rest of the crew meet, and what encouraged you to become a content creator? Oh shit. Um, how we met? Well, um, it was. I think it was at um. I'll just name him Oscar. Yeah, we're, we're at Oscar's mm-hmm. house, the anime friend. Yeah. <laughs> at a what? What holiday was it? It was Halloween. Halloween? Yeah, we mm. met at a Halloween party and like we we hit it off because we were both like on our path to being, you know, yeah. content creators. Well, you you, were... you more specifically. Oh, okay, well, but we but we yeah. connected in the fact that we knew the struggle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cuz you were you you're a Twitch stream, yeah. streamer. Mm-hmm. So like you you're still doing it occasionally, yeah. but uh Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we cuz I I've been watching <laughs> your and the guys had talked about you so like Oh, okay. And they had mentioned group, yeah. your name, and then you kind of just started hanging out. So I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> big fan." <laughs> and, and we kind of just, yeah, we just, I think that entire night we just t- talked about like content creation. Yeah, yeah. Because um, of my fascination with it, and because you were an actual content creator, so I was just like picking at your brain. Oh, okay. <laughs> did you learn anything at all from that night? I yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, glad to know because otherwise it would just would have been like a, a drunk conversation, like, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And I think the second time we hung out was my birthday when I turned 21. Oh, that's so, right. And I was like plastered. Oh, okay. <laughs> by the time you got there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what, yeah, what encouraged you to become a content creator? Um, it's going to sound really anticlimactic, but I was just bored. Nice. Um, bored with, uh, bored on a really, um, I guess like existential level. Because mm-hmm. at that point I was in school. I think I was two years into it too. Mm. It, um, it, was, uh, it was a really bad time for me like uh, mentally because I felt that I was a... Uh, the best way I can describe it was I was on a treadmill with like a with like a stick with like oh shit <clears throat> treadmill yes the the be- the best way I can describe my profound boredom of school at that during that time was uh was like I was running on a treadmill get like trying to reach some goal but it was like it was never getting there you know what mm-hmm. I mean I was on a treadmill mm-hmm. I wasn't going anywhere so it's um yeah it like i don't want to get too like right. vulnerable like expose my soul <laughs> exactly and, what, what the fuck god damn <laughs> ass what the fuck where okay. was i you don't want to get too vulnerable but yeah i don't i i don't want to get too vulnerable here but like it got to the point where i li- like i actually like um during a bus trip back home i cried on the bus because i was just like what am i doing right. you know what am i doing where am i going i don't know anybody in school like i'm like, because that's the whole thing about school, right? It's like, it's, it's only worth it if you have connections. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any connections. Mm. Yeah. And like, you know, the, the thing I was studying for was animation that was really getting nowhere. And I was slowly like losing my passion for mm-hmm. that uh, medium, even though I still like watching it. Yeah. And drawing. Right? And drawing. I, I do draw occasionally. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, um, quitting school is like the best thing to happen to my drawing because right. I got more passion when it's not work. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, basically, I was just bored on that really profound level, and I just wanted to do something else. Mm-hmm. I didn't have hopes about you know this whole toy review thing going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. I just thought like you know at that point I was on financial aid, I was getting good money, mm-hmm. and because I was renting out textbooks, I, I had a lot of leftover stuff. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, this um, SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2014 version is coming out, and it's a lot of money. I think I'm gonna film it. Nice. Because at that point, I was like watching a bunch of other toy reviews mm-hmm. who are now like kind of my friends like I've, right. I've, I've talked to them privately so yeah. it's kind of cool even though i'm really bad at um dming getting back on dms i'm sorry about that <laughs> bolt off the bottom is <laughs> um, uh but uh yeah like at that point i was watching a lot of those people so like i i, I thought like hey you know maybe i can do this too mm-hmm. and at that point i was really big into filthy frank so it's like what if i like added really like shit posty humor so right. that's that's what it was. Yeah. I made that first video of like the Godzilla unboxing, I think it was. Yeah. And the uh, people liked it. Mm. It kept going. Here I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I mean to suck your wee wee here. Okay. <laughs> but because like I'm, you, you I think your yeah. audience um, watches you for both your humor and the actual figures. Yeah. Because you have a, I think you have a lot of. It's safe to say, right? Do you have a lot of fans that are into figures as well? Yeah. Um, yeah. but as someone who's not really into, you got, I mean, you got me into model kits. Oh, that's so, right. So, I mean, I guess someone I'm into figures, but, yeah. uh, as someone who's not that into it, uh, I do watch your videos because of the humor. Mm, like it's, I, it's still, it's, there's a really big entertainment factor. To I, it. I appreciate it. So <laughs> that's, yeah. you, you're reaching a wider audience than I think you might not yeah. realize. 
Yeah, uh, I, I suppose so. Like, I do get a lot of comments. I mean, like, uh, when I met up with uh, the Living Tombstone at Anime Expo, he mentioned it, like, straight up to my face. Mm-hmm. He, I think his his exact words, Living Tombstone's exact words were like, I don't I don't give a shit about figures, but I like you. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh thanks, yeah, I we're, guess. We're, we're, I, but I give a shit about figures. What the fuck's up with that? <laughs> yeah, I think when it, when it comes down to it, um, personality is the biggest thing on YouTube. I feel like that's yeah. Where... If it doesn't, if it doesn't shine through, then um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And it could be any personality, mm-hmm. honestly. Just don't keep it too uh, clean. Yeah, I mean, not 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 in the terms of like family friendly, mm-hmm. but I mean, like don't um don't hold back on letting yourself be yourself. Yeah, basically, don't, don't let so I so I, don't be YouTube. I guess <laughs> I guess it's, uh, and as a not as a reviewer, but like if you want to get into reviewing, don't make the content about don't, too much about what you're reviewing. Mm. Throw your spice into it, because if it's okay, if it's yeah. if it's just like I well, mean that's actually good advice like for me like I haven't mm. heard this before but yeah <laughs> yeah like if say, say, say for example I'm like reviewing beer like and I'm just talking about the beer I'm not there's it's just beer mm. like that's all what it is anybody can do that anybody no one's gonna click on a video that's just a, a beer like you you need to capture like their attention right, right that's I feel like that's the biggest thing that reminds me I'm. Um, uh, Good friend of mine, my sister's boyfriend, mm. uh, DJ Occult. Mm. Like, comment, subscribe nice. to DJ Occult. <laughs> um, he uh, he showed me this channel when I was visiting my sister in San Francisco. He showed me just this channel where it was like literally just the guy um, testing out a lot of different like electrical electrical concepts because mm-hmm. he's an engineer, electrical engineer, mm-hmm. and it's insanely entertaining. Mm-hmm. But it's it's really like videos like uh, how do you light up in. Uh, What's that? L- um, a fluorescent light bulb. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you like get a fluorescent light bulb to light up? Mm-hmm. Sounds very like you know objective and sanitized, you know clean scientific content. Yeah. But no, this guy this guy's wacky. Yeah. It's like shit blows up. <laughs> it's like he's he's funny. He's like has funny edits. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah. Um. Uh, that's a. I think it's called Electro Boom. Mm-hmm. You guys want to check that out? He's pretty funny. So I'm. I want to show you a channel. I'm going to show you a video. Yeah. That it, this this guy reviews reviews cars. The the. the, the the channel is called Regular Car Reviews. Yeah, and he pretty much got me into cars through through his comedy because he's oh. hilarious. They're very. You know what? I've heard of him. I've heard of him because some comments like earlier uh-huh. in my YouTube career, they were like, "You're like the regular car reviews, but for toys." I'm gonna show you, but dude, he's <laughs> hilarious. Okay, <laughs> all right. I, I think that's a good. Let's let's end off on a po- positive note. I think it's a good place to end the podcast. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give you guys the spiel. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you want to ask us a questions, please don't hesitate to tweet at us. Um, social media links are going to be in the links down below, so I don't have to name them. Okay. Um, <laughs> and most importantly, don't forget to share with your friends. Um, we want to see the channel grow. Um, I don't know if you. I don't think you were here for the resolutions podcast. No, I was. Um, but I mentioned that I want to hit 10k for the channel. Oh, which nice. I think I think is an attainable goal. Yeah, but right my, now we're at seven. seven. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there you I, go, I think man. Yeah. Ten K, I think will be good. And if, if once we get close, I'm gonna we're gonna hit some like milestone goals for for videos that we, that we can create. Right. Right. Some incentives for you guys to subscribe. All right. On that note, we will catch you guys on the next video. All right, Take guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>